So that, so that obviously, it, it, I, I found that it, it has kind of hindered creativity a little bit um, to an extent because, yeah, like I said, the, the, the output or like, I, I, I think how we, how we, we get better as creators is, is that we, we gauge how, how people take our, our, our creations and and that and that in some way informs how we next approach the uh, the the act of creativity yeah. and with that gone I suppose you're kind of it's like you're kind of shouting into the void really you know um, yeah. to 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 a large extent um, and and then I suppose like people people who who are generating content for online <clears throat> it's um I think I think we're all like pretty pretty quickly into the, the lockdown, the first lockdown. I think people started to fatigue a lot from, you know, the, you know, trying to trying to get the same or any sense of enjoyment. Um, well, any any sense of enjoyment is probably too harsh, but the same sense of enjoyment out of content that would normally be enjoyed live, but is now being enjoyed online. As, oh, yeah. Pre, pre-recorded or paired back versions of what what they might expect. Yeah, I think the same at the same time it's bad, but like, as well as it's good because mm-hmm. no one ever would have thought of like right, let's do a virtual show and have set like sell tickets for this thing that people are going to be looking at on screen. Like, yeah, that wouldn't have been thought about like two years ago, for example. Like it, yeah, the technology was there, but it wasn't thought of. And like, but as I said, look. So many different things have come out of this, these like three, four lockdowns. Like so many different aspects of music, different like um, topics to talk about within music. So I say it, it is a good thing as well as a bad thing. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's not. Don't don't get me wrong. God, it's not. It's not all bad. But I suppose um, that's kind of one way that it is hugely hugely affects me. You know, and and uh, and many like me but yeah i mean there are there are people who you know take to it like a duck to water you know the the whole you know live streaming from from home and even even though i kind of got myself set up with the gear to do it i just kind of stopped at the final the final furlong and just went i don't know if i want to do this <laughs> or if yeah. i'm going to do if i'm going to put all this work into doing something i want to do it regularly but then you know, I suppose I was I was maybe waiting to see how long, how much longer the lockdown was going to last. And to be honest with you, I just I just kind of favoured trying to stay creative um, and write more material and record more more stuff. Yeah. You know, as opposed to trying to crowbar in the the live element of what it is I do when when it was kind of like you know. A one-legged cart, you know, yeah. because of yeah, a one-one yeah. wheel cart. Should I should I say three-legged <laughs> table? <laughs> it's true with no legs or anything, something like that. Um, yeah. Could I just ask what inspired you to be a musician? So when you like grew up, what made you say, right, I'm going to pick up this guitar, I'm going to start playing it, and then then move on to playing in bands and singing and playing piano. Yeah, I, I, I think um, it was really just a kind of want to to want to 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 enjoy it so much, and then to really, really want to make it part of my future, part of my life. Um, I mean, when I was younger, looking, looking, looking ahead, uh, I don't know. There's something, as I'm, I'm sure there are people on this on the, on, on this call that can. I can agree with or attest to that. Like it's it's almost something tangible that you can touch when you're when you're in the flow of enjoying music or creativity or anything like that. And it's so uh, it's so tangible almost that it's easier for you to kind of say, "I want this regularly in my life," or "I want my life to be based around this." I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. I want to do this yeah. you know 
And I suppose it's just a matter of, you know, I, I mean, I was, you know, really lucky that I, I ended up hooking up with a load of lads who were really serious about music and, you know, like really, you know, where it were just beginning the process of the, you know, that transition from kind of amateur into trying to go for the full time professional uh, element of it. You know, I mean, I was just, I was going out with this girl at the time who was taking, leaving certain classes in the evening with Damien Rice, who was a singer of the band Juniper. Yeah. And I just, I just made this, I just made this four track demo, you know. Um, on on for uh, on a, like a cassette <laughs> yeah. track and um my my girlfriend at the time she ended up ended up playing for for Damien who you know was just like a bloke who was in her music class you know and like he really he really liked this really liked it and and the the, the rest of Juniper were the rest of the guys were over in America on a on a J one whereas Damien had kind of fallen out of sync with the rest of the guys because unlike them he dropped out of his engineering course in Trinity and was he was just kind of doing covers gigs in in pubs and bars and that kind of thing. So so they they were all off in America on a on a J one and meanwhile he was back in Ireland and so me and him just ended up meeting, getting to, you know, uh, just really enjoying each other's company, talking about music. Uh, and and then he 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 hooked up with this girl, I had my girlfriend, so the four were going around in his in his box all astro, like just hanging out, playing music, listening to music and whatnot. Then the guys, the rest of the guys came back from America then at the end of the summer. And um they obviously had a little bit of a bit of a chat amongst themselves and asked me would I join the band Juniper. Yeah. Um just to, because I was, I was playing like Paul in the in in the band. I was playing playing a few different instruments, so it just meant then that there were there were three singers: it was myself, Damien, and Paul, who would share singing duties in Juniper, and we'd swap instruments, take turns being out front, you know. Yeah. So, I don't know. I, I mean, I was I was I was lucky in that way that, you know, as I said, I I, I ended up hooking up with like-minded guys who were willing to and wanting to you know take it a step further and go pro yeah you know it's great um, to be able to make that decision as well especially like a lot of leaving search students and people in plcs so this class is a plc so okay. like people are some people could be like completely confused i was for a while i thought i was going to do a completely different course after this i was going to do an emergency medical technician which has well, nothing to do with music or anything, then I realised well, I'm, I'm not going to be happy in that. So I'm going to stay with music because I know I'm something that I love and I'm not going to let it slip away just because I don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. So it's nice to be able to make a decision like that. Yeah, nice one. Yeah. Um, how, how's, how's it working out for yourself? Great, actually. Look, it's, it's, it's a slow process. Like It is yeah. hard to get everything into the one place and get it done and make things. So like, I'm releasing my first song on the 30th of March, like my first ever song. So it's, cool. gonna, it's obviously it's a, it's a big deal for myself. Obviously other people would think differently, but it's great to be able to like have something done to, to give out and to say, I made this, have a listen to it and tell me what you think. It's great to be able to do something like that. Yeah, exactly, and and you'll 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 probably find that that it'll really um, inform like the next song you write or the yeah. next, you know. Yeah, the one thing that can spark so many different other things just from that one small thing that you've done. Yeah, is there um, is there anything is there any artists that you'd love to work with like just like dream artists that you'd love to work with, and if or, or could you tell me about any future projects? involve other artists any future projects that inv that involve um or sorry any yes future projects that i i, I uh, will be collaborating um i was i was just i was in touch or rather 
do you know Vivian Long, who, who uh, another connection to Damien Rice, actually, she was the cellist with Damien Rice a good few years ago. Yeah. Vivian Long, yeah. I don't think I've heard of that name. I, if I, I kind of recognise it, but I don't know what I recognise it from. Yeah, she's, 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 done, she's done a lot of really cool covers and writes her own songs as well, which are, which are always great. Well, she just, just got in touch with me there out of the blue um, about working on one of her tunes. But it could be, it, see, that's the nice thing. It's, it's totally open and casual, you know, uh, so it could, it could end up, you know, uh, evolving into, into a collaboration as opposed to me just bringing my tuppence worth to, to her song, you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, so I, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm kind of finding, I'm kind of finding it quite slow. I like have loads of, loads of ideas, but it's the, it's the finishing that is, is yeah, getting the ideas into a, a solid state. Yeah, hard. no, I've loads, loads, loads of, loads of those songs that are like, you know, cars up on blocks, you know, <laughs> but I don't, uh, it's, it's not, it's not so easy. And I think that to speak for everyone here. Uh, um, or for a lot of people, that it's very difficult to to finish things, and I find that more so the case under under the kind of the the funk of of uh, of COVID, you know. Yeah. Um. So I'm not really kind of going dashing out, and I and I suppose I don't I don't really I, like I, I've I've never been somebody that kind of goes out looking for people to to collaborate with. Yeah. Um, I don't know what I don't know what that's about. Whether it's just a, a confidence in my own ability, or maybe I'm so aware that it takes so much effort to get an idea from start to finish myself that I don't want to anybody else to see me struggle <laughs> the way I do yeah. in that process. Do you know what I mean? Or that maybe kind of going, oh no no, you probably better have worked with somebody who's really fast and you know kind of yeah. knows exactly what they want whereas i i kind of take my time going around overturning every stone and you know exploring yeah. it you know, every every avenue um so who isn't like that in music who knows exactly well, well, well this well this is it you know there's probably loads of people going yeah i hear you man you know but and, but you know it's i it's 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 because of my own my my own awareness i guess of that yeah. that i don't go marching into the world going Hey everybody, let's collaborate. You know, because yeah. it's it can be difficult as well. You know, you think that something is something's going to go great with somebody based on their work, but a huge factor is their personality. But you don't really know their personality from the music. Yeah, you know, it could be a nightmare to work with. Yeah. <laughs> well, at the same time, they could be literally a godsend. It could be amazing. You know, so I think Ema just put in a question. If you want to unmute yourself, Ema, and go ahead and ask that. Um, just when you talked about there about not being able to like finish a project or getting over that hurdle is like the biggest thing anyone can face. I find it all the time. I'm writing constantly and I can never actually get a yeah. finished product. So what advice would you give when you kind of meet that hurdle? Is it down to a sense of anxiety? Is it down to nothing else to trust yourself? I think I think it comes to a point. I don't, I don't even think it's anxiety or trust in oneself. I think it's more so you've... At, there comes a certain stage when you've lived with the song and the idea for so long mm -hmm. and it's so ingrained in its current condition yeah. that it's hard to imagine it. Like, it's hard to know what's the next step that needs to be taken for this to kind of turn a corner and for it to to kind of go eureka, you know, to have that eureka moment. Yeah. Well, I've, I've struggled with that a long time, but I've, I've, I've been working um, in initially closely with um a previous teacher of Aaron's actually and Mr. Michael Major. Um I don't know if he taught any of the rest of you guys here was it was it just yourself Aaron that Mick taught? Yeah, no it was just me. Yeah, yeah. So I mean like initially I mean myself and Mick have known each other for for such a long time. And a couple of years ago I was working on an album that ended up coming out in 2019 called Monomania and he was he was working on a collection of songs as well 
aka an album. And we we just we just kind of fell into this thing where we were we were a soundboard for for each other. And sorry, I'm Emer. Uh, I am coming to. A, no, you're totally answer. fine. This is like because because it's because like I'm working on audition pieces. And I need to have like songs written. And that's like okay. my biggest thing is like having a soundboard and a mate of mine's helping me, but it's kind of getting over that hurdle of mm-hmm. I need to get this done. I'm in a time limit. And it's like, it's kind of yeah. really difficult to get it formed. Exactly. And, and if you don't, if you don't have that, that mate or that soundboard readily available, one thing, one thing that you kind of have to, uh, I suppose, take some solace in is that when you're when you are writing early ideas and you're throwing lots of ideas down, you're engaging a certain side side of your brain. You're 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 engaging that that creative or flow side of the brain, as Blind Boy, um, rubber band as Blind Boy has put it. I'm a big big fan of his podcast and just how how how, how open and inclusive he is with mm-hmm. talking about not just mental health but creativity. So I mean, something that he shone a light on for me was that and it made it was so simple and often the answer is but you're you're so caught up in your own like oh <laughs> you know but basically you're engaging one one side of your brain um in 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 the creative flow you're engaging the creative side of your brain and and that's great right but when the, the closer a song comes to get to to being finished or to de- more developed is it is, and it's getting closer to the to what what you might ordinarily call it finishing stages. That's kind of when the critical side of the brain kicks in, and I think if you can, if you can, well, first of all, be be aware of that. But if 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 you can in some way develop your own behaviour towards facilitating those two sides of the brain you know like I, when when you're when you're critiquing your song it's almost like you want to step out of your own head yeah and and be somebody else who has different opinions or who has different thoughts other than the person who had all the thoughts to put it together the way it is the song you know so i i, I don't know i mean with that with that with that in mind i don't know does does anybody else have like? Does anybody else here have 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 an idea of how you might be able to do that? Which is, you know, create a little bit of distance from your own creation, so that you can actually go. Well, what is it? What does it need to bring it to a point of completion? I mean, do you do you, do you sit down and do you write? You write a list of the positive things about the track in its current form and then write down the things that are just that are bugging you about it that are just not quite right and I think what that that's doing two things it's actually shining a light on well I've actually managed to take this song and this idea so far because these are all the things I really like about it you know because very often when we're struggling with something we only see the hill. We don't. We don't. We don't look behind. To kind of go. Wow. Well, look how high I've come already. You know, or how far I've come already. We mm-hmm. only still feel the battle ahead of us, the resistance. Mm-hmm. You know. Um. So I think it's really, really good to take stock of that, right? And that's one way of doing. Is kind of go. Okay, I like this. I really I like. I think it's a really strong vocal melody. I think it's got really strong motifs and hooks and chord. The chord structure is good. I remember going back and struggling with that, but I got it to a place that's really good. But what's it missing? It's missing. What is it missing? Is it missing? Like, is it is it is the is it too cluttered? Um, if if it's a recording we're talking about here, you know, is it is it is it too cluttered? Is there is the dynamic of the recording too flat? You know, have I gone and recorded it too high for myself? Am I am I physically uncomfortable like listening to it because I can hear the strain in my voice? You know. So I I suppose that's that's the really it's engaging that that critical side of the brain and realizing that you're doing that, mm-hmm. realizing that you've you're you're you've you you have surpassed in a lot of ways the the creative side of your brain to get to this plateau where you are, 
Yeah. And you've created a lot of this really, really good um, material on which you can engage the critical side of your brain. But now it's the kind of the real cerebral, logical kind of side of the brain that that has been engaged with it. Like, you know, so I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I think if you even get us, if you can even pinpoint for yourself the areas that you like, and that's really important to do. And then also um, pinpoint the areas that are bothering you or you feel are kind of dragging song down or not not as good as it could be and i and i think by by just identifying those those things by reflecting a bit on that and identifying those things you've um you remind yourself to feel good about the song and also highlight it you've you've shown a light on or you're focused in on what it is that's pissing you off about the song do you know what i mean mm -hmm. I, yeah. I don't know is that any is that any, no, that any was, help that was kind of like the perfect answer i think i was like looking for <laughs> Because I know, I, I know, and I know it's very notional. I know it's, 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 but even if you've, even if you've, you know, mates, whatever, cousins, the dog. I mean, I, I, I find something that sometimes really goes well. Sometimes you even just want to sit somebody down and get them to sit there while you listen to your song. And what you're doing is you're listening to your song through their ears. Yeah. You don't even, sometimes you don't even need their opinion. It's just like, my God, loads of things like mm. popped into my head that are, you know, it became glaringly obvious what what it is that's annoying me about this song. Yeah. By just listening to it through years, it's almost like you're preempting what they might say, because subconsciously it's it is there. You just need to access what it is. Perfect. Anyway. Thank you so much. That I'll was stop off. I'm sorry. No, that was like the brilliant answer. I think I'd actually. Listen to someone else's ears. That's like such a brilliant, like, yeah. Energy. It, it it's so true because you're you're just you're forced then to look at something from a completely different perspective, a different angle, physically. Yeah. Like it's almost like a tangible physical thing that you know you can just walk somebody in, sit down there for a minute and play some, mm. play the song. Okay, you can go now. <laughs> you know, yeah. like, it can be it can be that you know. I think I'm like that as well when it comes to making music. So like if I've made like like for example the song I'm going to be releasing later on this month, um yeah. I get in the car with my mom and I connect my phone to the car and just play it. I don't give her an option, I just say what you think of that and she tells me what she thinks. And that's it. And you you get you get your ideas from what they said. Um speaking on um Mick or, or sometimes what's not even said. Sometimes by it's just but by, by by I'm I'm just I'm forced to hear the song differently in their presence. Yeah. yeah that's it. I mean, by, 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 in case, case, without them saying anything. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You're right, Jay. Yeah. And Samir Aaron, before I forget to ask you, what, what, what name are you releasing under at the end of the month? Um it's gonna be called uh, the name that I'm gonna be releasing it under is it's not it's being released between me and my friend. My friend um he produces it, so he he brings the stuff together. I just play the instruments for it. So um, it'll come out under David Nevin. So it'll be coming out in his name. But um, okay. I'll, 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 hopefully I'm going to set up my own art at Spotify and release it on that as well. But okay. um, the song is going to be called Sponge. Sponge. So trying, yeah. So we have all the instrumentals done. We have uh, EQs done, masters done. We just need to get lyrics. So we're, we're kind of struggling with lyrics at the moment. Oh, uh, yeah. As you were saying about Mick Major there, um, Enjoy Me in the Pines and the album you released, Monomania. And um, I remember him calling me in one day when I was playing the drums in the, in the classroom. He called me in, he was like, Aaron, have a listen to this and tell me what you think. And it was She Steps Into the Light. And um, I remember listening to like the raw bits of that and he was like, what do you think of that? And I was like, oh, um, your bass is great. I, like, I, I love everything. And I literally, I couldn't say anything wrong about it. So, um, could you tell me, especially uh, Feel So Heavy as well, I remember him showing me the music video for that. And he's bought, um, oh, yeah. he's bought rights for like a really old, um, oh, I think it was like a disco or something. It's like a really old fashioned disco. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, it was, yeah. Yeah, it, it was then, ignored. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead, sorry, what you're going to say. No, no, I, I'm just to 
clarify the specifics of that. Um, he, he was, uh, well, as far as I know, the man is still alive. Um, what's his name again? Oh. Roy, Roy Spence. Yeah. Um, and himself and his brother back in the 40s, 50s, 60s, whatever it was, they used to make these homemade sci-fi movies. Yeah. So they oh, they make their own special effects and, you know, so it was quite, it was quite cheesy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it fit, it fit the, fitted the song so well. Like, it wouldn't work with, like, She, she Steps Into the Light or any oh. other song that you made, but it just fit perfectly with that. And um, what I was going to ask is, how do you come together as, like, a band and make something? How do you get this idea and send it to, for example, Mick and say, right, give me a baseline for this? How do you... How do you bring something like that together? Um, I think, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, with, well, with the case of, with the case of Steps Into The Light, um, well, I, I, I kind of had that song more or less finished and then, I mean, Mick, Mick brought so much to it then. Not, not so much in the bass department because I kind of had that. I mean, the song, song kind of came about really with just the, with the bass. Baseline came along quite early, but no, I mean, what Mick, Mick brought, you know, there's loads of um, cool call and response vocals, back and vocals in that song that that Mick came up with. And with Mick, I, I, I ended up, you know, developing those little, the little elements, just little sprinkles of ideas, really, just to try and retain the space in the song. Yeah. So it didn't get too full because, you know, conversely, like, feel so heavy. Is quite quite a busy mix. It's quite a lot of things. There, there there are quite a lot of things going on in in that mix. Yeah. I don't know. It's kind of it's quite different. I I've I, I used to be more. I used to come more from a singer songwriter point of view. Yeah. And um, I'm sorry now. I'm kind of losing the losing the train of thought here. So I I I I used used to come from more of a singer songwriter angle. Uh, you know, you'd sit down with a guitar or a piano and you'd have your melody and you'd work on the lyrics and then you'd record that down generally to click into the DAW. I've been using Pro Tools for years. And um, and then it kind of start to kind of put things on top of us, you know, that were appropriate and suitable. Yeah. And I was I was I was getting stuck into this this album um that ended ended up being Monomania back in that was released in 2019. But at the start of the process, of that album, which was kind of when I brought it up with Mick, just on a uh, just having a chat, the phone call, I said, "Look, I'm 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 starting into this new album, but I'm not even at the stage where I'm trying to complete things, like we were talking about, Emer, you know, where I'm trying to finish things. I, I'm I'm not even at that stage yet, and I'm feeling like, Ugh, what am I doing? <laughs> you know, do I really want to, you know, go bang my head against the brick wall here again and like and, and and alone that's the problem you know to to go go through the process alone because i think it's also good for all our mental health to mental health to to acknowledge the fact that it can be a very solitary uh and lonely process and even more so when you're kind of when you're trying to figure out something you know it it screams at you that you're you're on your own doing this process and there's nobody else inve in, invested in it as much as you are. Um, so, yeah, I was kind of at that stage where I was like, oh, God. So I think I think Mick kind of picked up on, and uh, well, I didn't even know if I was hinting at something. Now. I was just just having a whinge to on the phone, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and he said, send him across to you. So he sent sent us the stuff across, and he came back saying, man, this is great. Really, really like this. There's a... So there must have been something in the back of my mind that was make, making me move, try and move away from the singer songwriter thing, you know, because there were grooves and there were beats, and the way that those songs to to finally get to answer your question, the, what, what I was what I was doing differently this time was I was starting with a groove or a bass line or just like a melody, and I'm I'm still doing it at, at the moment actually like a um just mo you know in the last few days sent a very rough version of something over to Mick for his his opinion really and the way that song came about was I was just literally like sitting behind 
sitting behind the kit. I don't know if you can see it. Oh yeah, S- sitting behind the kit, like and just singing nonsense, you know, just r- rhythm and uh, you know the set, the sounds of vowels, and you know, I, I don't to kind of because I'm kind of been getting my prints on the last few years <laughs> or, or trying to. <laughs> Um, and it's a bit too early Monday morning for trying that, but uh, we're literally just playing a beat like and just singing nonsense. And then I, I brought it into to, into the DAW and kind of got the ballpark BPM that it was, and then just started chopping it up. And then yeah. I'd make little like four bar loop sections, like one, two, three, four. And contained in those loops was the sound of the drums and also me singing over them, it, uh, which it, it was all just captured on this on this phone, you know, so the yeah. phone demos. And then literally, like, just like Lego, just kind of going, what if I repeat that? You know, for example. So just by, just using repetition and then kind of go, yeah, that feels like a verse. Cool. And then there might there might be something in there that is a little bit more elated or a stronger melody. And that could be a chorus, for example. And then, like, there's a whole musical section where there's just a drum loop. And that, if I kind of figure that out. But it then it then kind of becomes, like, a bit of a, a scaffold, you know, or a skeleton of a song, you know, a map. Yeah. And then if you, you know, if you have, if you have somebody to, to collaborate with, it's great then to just try out production ideas. And beg, borrow, and steal left, right, and center reference yeah. tracks. Steal a guitar sound from, you know, from Curtis Mayfield. Like steal a groove from Bootsy Collins. You know, whatever. Like just because music. Like I, I, that's something I used to feel guilty about as well. I used to feel guilty about. Oh, I can't do that. That's that's already been done, and that song yeah. by that person. It's like take what really. you can. Don't feel sorry about. Yeah. Well, I mean, the thing is, I I think like. Art, art happens. Myself and Mick have talked about this. In fact, this is this was Mick's Mick's idea, so I can't take credit for it. But I think he's right when he said that. You, you if if you take two uh, pieces of art, existing pieces of art, or things things that have been created by other people, and you bring them together, and by doing so, you create a third thing. Yeah, that's, that's art. So, yeah. I mean, art is this constantly evolving, you know, cyclical, just washing machine of creativity and ideas by us humans. You know, so just because one thing was done by one person on one recording doesn't mean that you can't come into the context of your song and take on a different meaning or perhaps even come into the context of your song and actually inspire a whole springboard into a different avenue that you haven't explored or that you didn't think to explore until the you know this guitar part opened the door for example or this vocal melody or these bv's ideas you know so you know just to just to kind of i i mean again i, I can only share my own experience but i used to be very you know is this orthodox the word or i don't know like just very kind of just had this hang up a bit like not not stealing yeah, not being a not being a mad boy. You know? yeah. so, sorry, lads. I have something to drop on this if it's okay. Hi, Dave. I'm yeah, also David. Um, I was just doing? saying, like, I'm pretty good. Um, I'm just just saying that what you were saying there, like, obviously you don't want a magpie, and I understand that. But like, then again, I look and I think back of is there any songs where I can think of what have done that? And my biggest mm. example, I'm, I'm a massive Oasis fan, and Don't yeah. Look Back at Anger was literally stripped from John Lennon. Imagine. And they even yeah. reference him throughout the song. But as you said, they've taken that complete artistic approach to that song and probably have made a song nearly as big as that, you know, to be fair. Yeah. Like I think I think you're I don't I don't want to say like you're being harsh on yourself, but at the same time, if you say you have role models and live wins, it's like every nearly every band in history has done it, you know, throughout yeah. time. And I remember there was a massive uh, I don't know if you're a Richard Ashcroft fan from yeah, the verve oh, yeah. and yeah, yeah remember the bittersweet symphony with the rolling stones and the whole backlog yeah. with that like and there's that only came to completely but like like uh i think i think that like because if i'm thinking of stuff like 
like my brother for example he's in a band and they write a lot of stuff and i'm the one who, who usually kills his buzz saying no that sounds like you know that sounds like so i've learned to just shut up and let him go on if you know what i mean in a sense yeah 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 like i, I just find it very harsh it's like if you're really afraid of well not afraid but i guess of nitpicking off other stuff like your recording process must go through hell sometimes i'd say i reckon or like, but no, I no, I used to. I like now. This is going back years, yeah. years ago. I used to, but I don't. I don't now because, um, I I I basically open open myself to how what somebody else has done, how that can inform what I'm working on, yeah, and and how how it can open other doors, um. But no, I'm only sh- sharing that experience because I'd hate to think that anybody else was needlessly suffering through that as well <laughs> that guilt mm. you know what i mean <laughs> yeah so of i course. just i just i'm just shining a light and they're going no we appreciate appreciate your comment there um and yeah just just because we, there's so much that reflects back on us as creators and songwriters and when it's not going well it can be such a heavy burden it can be so weight because it can be it can, it can be such a heavy weight and that's that's another thing as well for for maintaining your own you know sense of look I, I don't I don't know the over, overused expression but you know safeguarding your mental health while yeah you know like it shouldn't it shouldn't it shouldn't tear strips off you you know what I mean but like I have a tiny example to start to cut in again like on that where I have a chorus hook written and it's performed on an instrument I don't even play. But I love right. it, love it so much. And the yeah. course is actually like the lyrics are really emotional to me, where to the point which that's how I like to write, you know what I mean? You like you really, yeah. you know. And I really love the lyrics to the point where I actually the song makes me really depressed. But I'm playing it constantly over and over and over again on an instrument I can play, and I'm constantly saying it in my head. It's almost yeah. as if I'm tearing myself down, but I love it, but it's art and it's just stuck. You know what I mean? Because it's yeah. just it's stuck. Um, like yeah. I'm like the process of I love this bit. It makes you feel shit in a good way, but it's stuck in my head and I don't know where to go for like anything else. Like, yeah. have you ever had that period where you have a gold mine, like maybe a chorus or a verse, you're like, that's brilliant and you have nothing to throw in with it or it takes ages to have anything that relates to it, like in a good sense. Yeah, I guess. yeah no, I mean, like, I mean, they're the, they're, the, they're the moments that we strive for, aren't they? You know, to kind mm. of have, to, to, to stumble upon those things. Uh, do we find them or do they find us? You know? um, Very true. <laughs> um, but, but I, I don't know, uh, like, we're, we're just, we're, we're just, you know, with the, me- the mental health thing, like, uh, yeah. you know, we have to remember as well that what, what we output and what we're doing is, it's not, it's not, it's not an extension of ourselves. It's not, it's not, sorry, it's not, it's not, well, it's, in some ways it is an extension, but it's not a measure of ourselves. Yeah. I think by, I think by, by turning up and doing what we do, that's that's hugely commendable, you know. Mm. And yes, yes, there is a struggle, and like, but nobody finds it easy. Nobody. Like, we all we always have to remember that what we hear is the finished product by famous people, and there's one name attached to it. But we don't realize that there's teams of people doing PR. There's like there there are people who might even be involved in teams of people writing the lyrics for the chorus yeah <laughs> you know so oh, yeah. but what, what we do is we're doing everything we're uploading spotify we're doing our promotion we're writing the lyrics we're writing the chords you know we're do, 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 do. and that are you on tiktok am i on tiktok i sure should set up a tiktok for the crack yeah, yeah. Uh, no i'm purely saying that for promotion well i'm not even on it but Literally yeah, for your band, it's your literally. For, I mean, yeah. that, well, that's to be honest, that's the only reason I ever engaged with the. That's it, yeah. Like hey, Facebook or whatever. Person. There's this no, woman, um, Blue the Tiger, I think her name is, and she blew up just from playing playing bass covers, and then her songs are like number one in USA and all that, just from TikTok. Crazy. Crazy. What's her name? Some something Tigers. Yeah, B L U D E Tiger. So Blue the Tiger is a name. That's like her actual name. It's not like a made-up thing. So like, what a cool name. <laughs> Kill her just like she literally just blew up out of nowhere. She, yeah. I think she played um, 
she plays bass covers for nearly everything and then just out of, out of nowhere she said right i'm releasing this song everyone listened to it. and then everyone did listen to it and then huge loved it. amazing yeah yeah um yeah. speaking of like you have given us so much already like advice wise on music and like what you can and what you should and shouldn't do and what you think is right and what you don't think is right um what is what's the best advice you've been giving yourself whether it's by me, whether it's by Jesus himself, whatever it is. See, is he a, is he a songwriter as well, is he? <laughs> I think so, yeah. Yeah, he wrote this song called The Angelus. It's an absolute banger. You should listen to it sometimes. <laughs> is that the tune that Leonard, Leonard Cohn tried to steal off from Ali Livia, isn't it? <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I suppose the thing is, is, is that like just some some of the stuff I was saying already, just things to to reassure yourself in the process, which is as I said, we 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 consume finished products by by famous people. And like I said there, not to bore you by repeating myself, but you know, there are a lot of people involved in that. And and you just you just hear the finished product you know mm-hmm. it's mixed by professionals mastered by professionals and you know played by djs and told and 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 you're told that this is great and so it is great and and then you're kind of going how do i how do i how, how do i get close to this I, I want i want i want some of that you know but which is fine but it all comes down to like your your own your own creativity and taking stock of the things that you're good at. And th- there are areas that you're naturally good at, but there, there are going to be areas like anybody where they find it difficult, they struggle, and they need, you know, extra help in those areas, be it lyric writing or writing chords. Some people are great lyrics and they they've, they've just can't pull, pull music together. So nobody, nobody you know, has it, well, there are very few people who have it all, you know, very, very few people. And some, sometimes those people even cho- choose to write songs for, for other people, you know, but I don't know. I suppose my, my, my big thing is just, is not to kind of, not to use, not to mistake creativity as a measure of one's own, one's own ability, but even worse, one's own self, you know, that it's it's something to be to immerse yourself in and and enjoy and to get something back from like Dave you were saying there about that that killer chorus you have you know uh in my own words anyway <laughs> yeah well that's good man it's good like uh it's the only song of like many I've written where I'm actually like you know what it might go somewhere or the world might see it you know what I mean if you ever have that approach I'm sure there's like a lot of stuff you throw in the bin like oh well, it's there but you know yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, stuff that you just kind of it's just been around for a bit too long and mm. it's annoying you have to hear. It. <laughs> yeah. Um yeah, I don't know. So it's just it, it's just those those things. And then like it was it was a bit it was quite revelatory as well, like just hearing that that thing about the you know, thinking more constructively about when I say constructively, I mean compartmentalizing. The different stages that you go through in writing a song and like we were talking with there Emer, the the two sides of the brain the critical and the creative you know and you almost have to kind of go no i'm not gonna let that voice of is it good is it is it good enough you know did it like no i'm in i'm in i'm in creative mode here you know um and i'm not gonna i'm not gonna let questioning voices in i'll do that later and get all the ideas down and just go with it run with it just do it do it do it and then later when i'm in a different kind of headspace and you might and you might find given a certain time of time of day you might be more more critical headspace like i'm 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 quite a morning person unless it's been a a late night before i I do I, i do i do i do love the uh the morning time and i find that i'm much more creative then and then maybe do something more 
kind of cerebral and critical in the afternoon. So if you, it, it's about, I suppose, f- facilitating your own workflow, getting to know yourself, getting to know what works for you and play to your strengths because we all have strengths um, and we all have weaknesses. But if you can I- identify them, then you, you actually know where to, where to hone in on, where to, where to focus in on to uh, improve the bigger picture, you know. Hi, Dave. I'm the work experience teacher here. I'm delighted that you came. I just saw that I didn't realize you were on today. Um, Hi, Cormac. Suffer- How are you? Very nice to meet you. I've just been suffering from kind of migraines and terrible things. Oh, no. from looking at, you know, from teaching online and that. So I've been trying to avoid it. But um, I just heard you talking about songwriting. Very interesting. And I think it's a very important point that you made there because um, artists often talk about mental blocks and so on. Um, yeah. And I think that sometimes comes from them being too critical when they're about songwriting. You know, I think, as you say, it's a bit like trying, just throwing pots of paint on a canvas first. Just throw it down, just lash yeah. it out there, express it out there, try out those words. Uh, and eventually yeah. then what will happen is you'll find that you start to then start to sculpt those words and you start to shape them up. And you become, you know, it's like a crass person almost like with your with your yeah. words. Saying that, gotcha. um, you know, like I write as well, I write songs and stuff like that. And, you know, it depends. Sometimes the process is that you would sing something that actually you don't know what it means. There are many songs out there that uh, writers have written. Um, like, you know, You Are My Wonder Wall. Like, what's that got about? A lot of um, artists don't even know what they're singing about, but their lyrics, yeah, some yeah. of those songs you are the most popular. say that word about Oasis. <laughs> yeah, but some of them are the most popular songs in the world, and yet they don't know what they're singing about. Bowie was famous for cutting up bits of um, paper. That's and right, yeah, yeah. And mixing them all. And him and Brian Eno had this system with the packs of cards where they picked them up, and one card would say something like, play something really melodic or whatever and they go in and they knock down all the faders in the missing only listen to the, the say the guitar or something put the headphones on and then play something to that alone and then uh, Eno would go in and his card might say play something you know outrageously uh you know um say a high degree of um of uh of reverb and uh echo and the sustain or whatever some kind of crazy sound and he'd pop down there and they would often play blind without even realizing what the others had played. And then what they do is they put up the faders on the mixer and they'd find that certain areas of the music worked really well together and certain areas didn't. So they just fade parts out. And I thought that was absolutely fascinating because sometimes I used to listen to some of Bowie's songs and go, geez, where did he come up with that of putting those two sounds together? How that come from? It came from that mad card game that they used to play. Randomizing, yeah. Yeah, randomizing, yeah. Yeah, and, and and as you, as you say, flinging paint paint at the easel, you know, it's, mm. you know, it's it's uh, just just running with that that critical side, that creative side of the brain, you know. Yeah. And I mean, even even if it's, it's happened to me where you're kind of going, oh, this this feels really strong. This kind of sounds like something though. And I, I'm I'm currently not reading, but but because I had I had to use up Audible credits, you know, the audio books. So mm-hmm, I ended yeah. up downloading the um the Jeff Tweedy book, How to Write One Song. So he talks about how to write one song and then the whole reasoning behind, well, why would you write just one song? Start there and see how you feel, you know? Yeah. Um, it's, it's very, it's very interesting. It's only, it's only a short book. I'd recommend it to, to, to anybody. Um, yeah. And it just, it's just, you know, I, I think, I think any, anybody who goes through the, the complex and convoluted process of songwriting or any kind of creativity, they always have something to share. They always have some little, little nugget, you know. Um, so, I, I love, I love, I love listening, listening to people waffle on about, you know, the creative process, you know, because you can be talking about an artist or you can be listening to an artist who suddenly says something that has relevance with you and your songwriting, for example, you know. Um, a, do you, do you, I know. Um... I don't know if you and Mick get your tracks mastered by the same person. Um, is, is that don't true? You I don't know you don't, but I think you know Liam Caffrey. Oh yeah, Mick. Mick yeah. works with Liam. I've I've yet I've yet to man. Um, yeah, he um, he's actually one of our teachers for um, sound engineering. So he, oh, is he uh, I remember one of our first weeks. He actually brought up one of Mick's tracks for Bond on Ruler. Brought up a uh, Good Friday, I think it was. Good Friday. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, Amazing. Yeah, and I was asking him, and he said he, he said he knew the boat is, so I just wanted to bring that up. Um, yeah. Another yeah. thing, what's like, what's 
your favourite song to play live out of anything, whether it's a cover or whether it's Bell X1, Join Me in the Pines, whatever? God, you know, um... Personally, my, like, favourite one to do is Rocky Took a Lover by Bell X1. I, I okay. love that one. That's, I think that that's been one of my favourite songs altogether. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that 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 that'd definitely be up there. All right, just it's a good, it's a good hook, it's a good song, good mm. lyrics, good story, and it always, uh, it's always, you know, it's it's popular. It's of a certain pace, gets the crowd going, um, and it's normally near the end of the gig, you know, yeah. hands in the air moment. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, that's 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 true. Like that, the, the song, the, the pine song, join me. The pine song you brought feels so heavy. That's that always, that's one that always feels quite uh, e- easy and and you know in flow. Yeah. But uh, then there's another song on the same album called "Bring Me Love," which is more heart in the sleeve. Probably the, the only song on the album that's heart on the sleeve. Um, and that's it's just it, it's just a killer to sing, you know. Yeah. It's lovely. Yeah. And um relating to that, what's the worst worst um gig you've ever experienced? What's like the worst thing that ever happened? Well X played and this is purely just a technical thing. We played the electric picnic a few years ago and I had just I had just gotten a new a new pedal board built. Oh yeah. And it was it was bucketing down rain. In fact, they kind of delayed us coming on stage because the water had gotten onto the the monitor desk at yeah. the side of the stage. You know, the desk that would that the engineer controls to to allow the band to hear themselves on stage. So that that had gotten wet. So they were trying to kind of quickly wheel out the spare one that they had. You know, the the backup one and get it plugged in. So we we were so our set then was was uh, was shortened then because of that. But then when I when I walked out. When, stage i don't know what was going on but my new my new pedal board guitar pedal board that i just had built uh none of it was working and all that i was getting out of the amp was this like screaming screaming high tone and the only way that it would work the amp would work if i plugged the guitar straight into the amplifier so um so i had to do the whole gig minus my brand new pedal board that i was all excited about using with just the guitar plugged no, straight into the amp, no, no effects. And I'm, and I'm, I'm a real effects person. I'm not like, yeah. like an amazing kind of like, twiddly widdly kind of amazingly accomplished on guitar. I play a few instruments well, you know, yeah. enough to, to get by and to kind of, um, so I ended up having like just it was really frustrating, really disheartening. Like, oh. <laughs> and then and then it's spoke hard, spoke man. to loads of people about the gig afterwards and they were all gone honest to god I think that was the best Bell X one gig I've ever seen <laughs> <laughs> and I was like right I'll get my coat though <laughs> um, before like, I no, asked wasn't the best. <laughs> oh no go ahead go ahead sorry no I was just saying no it wasn't the best gig ever <laughs> the worst gig ever <laughs> oh I thought you would have been absolutely Oh, tearing the place up. I would have been so angry. Oh, um, man, before I, I ask the last question, does anyone else have the question to ask Dave before we go? No, 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 no. Right. Well, give me a second. Oh. <laughs> um, no, I guess I guess I kind of wanted to lead into like more of the live side aspect. And like I was wondering, like, there's always this moment uh, every band or artist hits. Like, was there a stage where or even a venue where you were playing with the lads or whatever, and you were just like, "Yeah, we're here. Like, this is this is my element. Like, I can see myself doing this for life." Or like, it could have been even before you were big. Like, you couldn't play to like two people. Or like, was there just that moment, whatever, just hit you, just saying like, "Yeah, I could see myself doing this for like another fifty years." Like, like because I think I don't know. Like some artists say, "Oh yeah, it's this," but some just say, "No." Like, yeah, I don't know. Um... Like if you were to close no. your eyes and kind of like go back to one live moment, like you, you always like either brings a smile on your face or whatever. It's just like, yeah, it was then. It's just like, yeah. goes my last question. Oh shit! Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. um, yeah, I don't know. I, 
I've always found like you know the like the big the big gigs like the biggest gig for example that Bellex played. We did we did our own headline slot at Malahide Castle. Oh, nice. A few, few few years ago, um, it was all it was all downhill after that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, so that was that was amazing. That was kind of in, ter- in terms of crowd and all the rest of it. And yeah. Size and um, um, that was really enjoyable. But those those gigs, there's something very disconnected about them because because they're so big. The crowd is so far back. And you're sent, you know, you can't see the whites of people's eyes, as as they say. You can't, you don't feel connected. I always feel like like something spiritual is going on in in those smaller gigs, the smaller intimate gigs, where you feel like you're literally just singing to the, the people who are you can reach out and touch. You know, that mm-hmm. there's something really moving about that. A spiritual experience you know and and when when people are engrossed and you know it's this back and forth thing that that back and forth connectivity that we're that we're all craving and missing that's yeah. the that's more evident in smaller intimate gigs um than it is in big gigs like for example we tried we tried years ago uh, we tried in-ear monitors yeah i i, I hated it I hated it and Paul and the band hated it as well. Like, well, not hated it, but I, I really hated it because it just made me feel like, you know, the way if you put That's your fingers in your ears and you talk, you can hear your own voice resonating in your skull. Mm-hmm. Now, you're not obviously playing a gig with your fingers in your ears, but it's that <laughs> sense of claustrophobia or being shut off. And it's so, even if you can see people, you're just, you're like, it's very hard to overcome that obstacle of, of, of not being able to hear the ambience of the space yeah. that we're all sharing it's it's it then becomes me and them as opposed to us you know and so i, I think favorite gigs i think have always been and also like i i love you know i love i love being part of the mix singing and i love being able to hear my voice and i love being able to pitch properly and not being overwhelmed with mm. massive bass tones and you know yeah things that stop me being able to pitch and those things are more prevalent in the bigger louder gigs you know as opposed to like the myself paul and dom go and have done acoustic gigs and then we do acoustic gigs with uh, a quartet as well like these four great string players that, that we, we hooked up with and i love those gigs you know they just you open your mouth and you're singing or you play a real piano and it's like there it is yeah no, you don't have to look for your own, so, your own sound. Yeah, you're not you're not compromised. Or even yeah. even when I hear a mix of like a, one of those big overblown outdoor gigs, yeah. all you hear is like the kick drum and the vocal. You know, yeah. so it's a dream of more of Wheelings than Tree Arena. Then would it be like every day of the week for yourself? Yeah, 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 yeah it would be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like we were, uh, and it's, there's a massive amount of pressure put on those bigger gigs. It seems. Yeah. You know, for a lot less spiritual reward, not to be kind of. OTT about it or yeah, yeah, yeah. about it, but it is it is that like we were we were approached by like the the, the idea was floated uh, probably about a year before the pandemic kicked in um, about the idea of rather than doing a run of Bell X One gigs why don't you just why don't you just do your own three arena gig and give it loads of promotion yeah push it to be the one basically be to be the one like yeah and. I, I was a bit like in the one hand going, going yeah that would be deadly you know but on the <laughs> other hand I kind of got behind Paul Paul had the strongest opinion about it and he's right I, I, I'm you know he kind of hit the nail on the head it's like what what an what an immense amount of pressure to put on one gig like talk about putting all your eggs in one basket yeah you can either like to, to do what it is we do which is play and perform music why don't you do a string of meaningful gigs that actually give you you know that spiritual fulfillment and that you really enjoy and you can hear yourself and you're enjoying yourself prayer to watching you they're reading that you're enjoying it it's just lovely oh it's gorgeous <laughs> you yeah <know? laughs> right? it but, uh, as opposed to one night and what if what if what if things don't go perfectly you know what i mean it's like <laughs> yeah you know well, dave you might be a bit jealous there's one performer who I mentioned there, Manu Chow, who has oh, yeah. the 
he's got the freedom to do whatever he likes because he's not hooked up to any record company. So he can yeah. choose when he wants to do his live gigs, when he doesn't, and he can be off for a year. He can, you know, so it's it's kind of yeah. like the um, it's what in Spanish they call it duende. It's this idea that when you feel like singing, you sing. It's kind of quite gypsy thing over there. And they call it duende. It's that kind of magic that comes from of the moment, you know, when you really feel duende. like it. Whereas what you're talking about there is kind of almost like you're fabricating something. It's, it becomes almost yeah. an artifice, really, doesn't it? Um, yeah, and that yeah, puts yeah. enormous pressure, as you say, on yourself then to live up to this, you know, whatever that you build up. Yeah. 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 All, all the all the eggs in one basket kind of thing. Yeah, and, and all the eggs in one all, basket. And it's all over. It's all over in, in one go instead yeah. of it being prolonged. Yeah, enjoyable. an organic thing. Yeah. 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 But anyway, that's just another one of my, my silly opinions. Yeah, I just want to say, Dave, thanks so much for doing this. It really means a lot to all of us here in Valley Farm. Because we've, the plan was to organise this big live gig and uh, everyone was going to be like sound engineering it. People like me and a couple of other students would have been performing in it. Everything would have been grand. But then level five hit and we couldn't do anything about it. So we compromised yeah. with doing interviews. So like, for example, I talked to the bassist for Gorillaz, Ema talked to a, a, a decent band over in America called Melt and so on. So like, Brilliant. thanks so much. It really does mean a lot that you you showed up for this. Yeah, no worries. Well, th thank you. Thank you for, for the invite. It's, I'm, yeah. I'm honored to be here with you guys and just yes. keep on keeping on, you know? Yeah, thanks a million, David, thank on behalf you. of yes. the administration side of the college it's really decent of you to give up your time like that um you're cutting into my class now which is fantastic by the way so i have to thank you for that as well the more you keep oh, talking as a, the better as a, as a tutor i know how, how naughty that is <laughs> <laughs> anyway uh much appreciated so hopefully i'll see you soon enough dave me and you and yeah, me you have a job exactly eventually. exactly yeah yeah hope hope to hope to meet you all in person yeah. somewhere yeah. Yeah. somewhere yeah. further so down much. the line yeah, brilliant. Thanks very much. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Cheers, David. <laughs>